people has made in the Montopolis area through Friendship Community Center. Stay with us. This is Austin Faith Dialogue, a public affairs program discussing the important crossroad of religion in life, produced by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC-TV. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues throughout our area. Now, today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Sandy Wilder, your host of Austin Faith Dialogue today. Thank you for joining us. And with us today, we have Virginia Warrington and Francis Ricker. They're co-chairs of the leadership team of Montopolis Friendship Community Center. Thanks for being here. Let's assume that maybe there are people who don't know about the center, who don't know where it's located, what it's done. Tell us a little something about how the center got started. Well, in 1956 was the beginning of Montopolis uh, Friendship Community Center. There were a group of Methodist women who were aware that there were many ways in which the Montopolis area was isolated from other agencies within Austin and uh, through door-to-door uh, -to -door sometimes uh, interviews they discovered that there was a real need for uh, a place where persons could get uh, clothing, used clothing. They were aware that mothers were in need of a, uh, a club that might um, give them both hygienic and nutritional opportunities as well as as um, social uh, opportunities, and then primarily uh, a place where children, kindergarten children, five-year-olds, could um, have educational uh, opportunities. And those were the three areas in which uh, uh, the Montopolis Community Friendship Center began. And those three areas have continued. So a group of women went door to door in the Montopolis area these, uh, what, 39 years ago now. But from the word center, it sounds as if there's actually an established location for the work. Right, it's located at 403 Vargas Road on the one end of the Civitan Playground. And Allison School is on the other end, Allison Elementary School. So if someone were to visit that location, what would they find there? We have uh, two buildings. They came at different times. They were built at different times. Our color is yellow. We feel that's a, a positive, promising color. Two yellow buildings. One is the clothing room, activities room. The other building is a, two classrooms for those preschool. And uh, I would imagine that the, the buildings get used by the community from time to time too, right? Yes, the Colorado room, which is the room connected to our clothing room, is used uh, quite a bit on the weekends for wedding showers, for uh, uh, baptismal confirmation uh, parties, for uh, an opportunity for uh, persons within the Monopolis uh, community to have a place where they can um, have uh, meetings and parties with the uh, kitchen facilities. And um, it's used almost every weekend. Hmm. What, what kind of staff does the center have? This sounds like a very busy place. Well, at this point, we have a teacher who has been with us um, maybe 15 years, and a teacher's aide who's uh, been a substitute and a teacher's aide for 20 years, and a custodian that's been there 25 years. Hmm. That's our staff, and lots of volunteers. That's it? That's it. Mm -hmm. So where, where do all these volunteers come from? That must be quite a group of people. Well, it is, and they come from all over the uh, city of Austin. Primarily, they're, they're Methodist women who have heard about the need, have uh, come to understand themselves as persons who could meet some of those needs, and found enjoyment in uh, going to uh, the Montopolis community to work either in the a uh, clothing store or uh, in some of our other areas are working with the children. But there's always a, a need for volunteers, I would assume. Right. Even our new projects are needing volunteers. We, we're happy to have some on in the drawing board. Now, back in 1956, I would imagine the Montopolis area was 
farther out of the city than it is now since Austin has, has grown a bit. What was the area like back um, in those early days? What, what stories have you heard about who lived there and uh, what, what people did in the area? Well, the Montopolis area is still multiracial, Hispanic, uh, black, and Anglo, and it's still today. But then it was so isolated, as Francis said, and it had the elementary school, which was the focus of the community, but no city services mm -hmm. like a recreation department or a neighborhood center. So that was the reason it was thought that a lot of good enrichment could be done by focusing on Montopolis and offering a preschool. And at, at that point, um, were you working with, say, women who were working outside the home or women who were home with their children? Um, who came to the center at that point? Well, at that time, uh, more women uh, were staying at home than were uh, working. So in many instances, the Mother's Club <coughs> fulfilled a real need for persons to come together in a, a setting. But also uh, the children uh, were uh, brought by uh, parents. In many instances now, they're brought by grandparents mm. who are taking care of the children and find that the um, um, opportunities at the community center um, allow them to have a little time for themselves or themselves or to catch up possibly mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. some things that they've needed very much to do. So it's, it's very much appreciated, though it's in many instances gone through two generations at least. <laughs> and how many people <clears throat> does the center serve, say, on average? Well, I, I would say 500 a month. Do you agree? Well, yeah. include, yes, including the use of the uh, of the facility on the weekend. Hmm. You're right, a very <coughs> busy place. Let's see, so there's a, a thrift room, right? right? And uh, preschool? And what are some of the other current programs? Uh, we have arts and crafts. Um, the women have been making arts and crafts and have been looking for markets in which to uh, sell their, their wells, their wares. And uh, so this has been a, a a way to give them a little economic boost. That's been successful. And then the sewing classes have been a, a way for them to make clothes for themselves, but also they've made sleeping bags for the homeless, uh, using utilizing uh, excess material that maybe were too large for personal clothing. So that's two programs that uh, bring people in. And the two in recent uh, days, we've started two two new programs. One is tutoring, after school tutoring twice a, a week for uh, persons who need, for young people who need extra help. And then we've started um, sort of an apartment outreach at Fairway Apartments in which um, at least um, two days a week, two Fridays a month, we go to the Fairway Apartment for um, uh, art activities with children, for uh, games and songs and story time, and then always refreshments. Hmm. I'm, I know that some churches have occasionally had difficulty reaching out to apartment dwellers. For, for some reason, that connection uh, doesn't get made sometimes. How has that project gone for you, that, that outreach project? The we, we've just begun. We were there in December and then two times in January. But many of these uh, children have come to us through the years to be in our preschool and our Mother's Day out. But because of lack of transportation, we feel we're really going to a place where there's a lack of, of play time for them. And it would really offer a, a great service to that uh, special place. They've had problems through the years. It's low income, very low. The, the parents uh, have few ways to entertain mm -hmm. the children. So it sounds as if this one would be really successful. Well, we hope so. But we're also aware that uh, in many instances you offer a program which, which sometimes needs more time and a great deal of patience for it to be um, the success that you want it to. And so we are continuing this program hoping that uh, uh, this, this will grow. We're very well aware that these are children that need opportunity to uh, relate to other children in a 
focused and in a um, uh, setting which in which there are requirements to give a, a other children's space and sometimes this and have your own space and sometimes this is not an easy easy thing to learn and we're hoping that this will give uh, children opportunity not only to have a good time but to have uh, opportunities for behavioral learning of behavioral skills I know their parents appreciate that what about in the summertime when children aren't in public schools does the program at the center change then we have been offering uh, an enrichment time for the for children uh, five years old through uh, third grade and uh, different me church members have come and been responsible for uh, two hours uh, entertainment time, not entertainment, but activity time, mm -hmm. story time, and, and arts and craft. And this would, this uh, I think went through the middle of July last year. And we find though in August we have to sort of take a break because then we start up again in September. So the program is, is basically, what, 11 months now? Almost year round. It has, well, it has we, been. We would almost. like very much for it. The, the building itself is used by the community uh, all year long. <laughs> But the, um, uh, some of the, the specific programs uh, are timed so that they're not as busy during the summer. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone were to want to, uh, say, use the center for an activity, what would they need to do? Who would they need to, to talk to about using the facilities? Well, one of our charter members or organizing persons, Velma Miles, is in charge of the calendar for the activity, the Colorado Hall activities. And they schedule with her. Uh, if they call the center, uh, we have her number. And she schedules that for us and uh, does a great job. Hmm. OK, so is that, that sounds like that might be a good opportunity, maybe, for folks who are listening today to, uh, to call and take advantage. Right. We, we have a, a fee, but it's just for the custodian to open and close very minimal. We'll be back in just a moment to uh, talk a little bit more about Friendship Center, but now we wanted to pause and share a little bit about what Austin Metropolitan Ministries is with you. Stay with us. Serving Austin means serving you. That has always been the primary goal of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. We are religion in action through the work of these organizations. Each plays a key role in making the capital city a better place to live, but we can't do it alone. Do you have some spare time, talents, or any resources that you can share? If you do, please call AMM at 472-7627 because serving Austin means serving you. Today we're talking with two women involved in Montopolis Friendship Community Center with uh, Francis Ricker and Virginia Warrington. Let's move the conversation a bit to talk about one particular program, your preschool. I know that's an exciting one for the two of you, so tell us a little bit about what that one is. Rachel, well, we are proud of our preschool. I think Francis mentioned that years ago during the organization, five-year-olds were served and remembering that pub, uh, the public schools did not have five-year-old kindergarten. And then once it was implemented in the public schools, we began to serve four-year-olds. And uh, now uh, Allison School is an entitlement school and they have a four-year-old program too and are taking some fours. But now we are open for our preschool fours and three-year-olds. And we feel it's just a wonderful way to give these children a, a head start in being in a school situation, developing their language skills and uh, developing a feeling of self-esteem and, and uh, just really blossoming. The Mother's Day Out also gives the children a chance, those twos and threes, to be in a school situation and uh, are ready to follow directions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're proud of this. Would you like to add something? Or? <laughs> well, I think it's a program which uh, indicates how flexible the Friendship Trinity Center has been through the years and that there are a number of uh, worth, very worthwhile programs that had their beginnings in, uh, at the Friendship Center and yet have moved out into uh, the community. And the, the fact that 
we moved from <clears throat> in 72 when when um, public school uh, gave us the opportunity for kindergarten children to uh, have uh, education then the center moved to four-year-olds and now moving to three-year-olds this is in some instances it seems as though the, the center has been working itself out of out of business but we look on this upon this as success because this means that what the center saw as a need was a real need and was taken over by by the community the uh, uh, well child clinic had its beginning in at the community center with the doctors and the nurses coming to the center to give shots and to give uh, information to the parents and now this is housed in uh, uh, a county health health center mm. and uh, this was true of uh, a, a number of things that uh, uh, should give us a real sense of of uh, pride i think in that the center served and served well to the point that it sensitized uh the entire community and the city in some respects to yeah. the needs of montopolis that's right it sounds as if the center is uh, quite an underappreciated jewel in the montopolis area what are some of the programs going on now or or that you're dreaming about that you can see will be successful and perhaps spun off like some of these other ones we're really happy to to announce prob probably now because it's new is that allison school has a grant for the an even start program where they will take 10 families and offer uh concurrent classes of ged and uh, parenting and enrichment for the children activities and because we have a, a common bond there in the community they will be using some of our facilities and we're very happy that we're there for them and uh, it can be utilized uh, even start then is is what a, a federal program to, yes. to try to to help bring a family up to what, a, family. Le a level playing field i guess with some right. others yes uh-huh and we're just happy to be in the community and be available to participate in any kind of programs that will especially help women and children exactly Okay, so we've got Even Start. What are, what are some others that, that you're in the process of creating? Well, the two right now that we're most concerned about is the apartment ministry and also the uh, tutorial opportunity because we feel that uh, there is a very definite need and if persons will only take advantage of it, this will help uh, uh, spin off of what's the even start program is trying so hard to to give the uh, the area an opportunity for um, being at a at a level which uh, to which they're entitled but also from uh, if the tutoring program could take off that would really be something which I think we could have real real pride in we're really blessed with wonderful, dedicated volunteers. They just made such an impact on the community. Sounds like. Let's do a little dreaming here. Suppose you had, oh, access to almost unlimited funds and unlimited volunteers. How, how do you see the center, if that were the case, growing and changing? What, what kinds of things might you be able to respond to in that case? We'd have to coordinate with the other um, agencies in the community, but I, I would see that we might do more with the, a teenage group. Years ago, they um, did have square, of course it was an older time, less things going on, a square dancing and counseling and tutoring for the, the junior high group. And uh, possibly with volunteers coming at all hours of the day, we could schedule more programs for either the latchkey are the teenagers but that is a dream it takes a lot of planning mm -hmm. and and uh, just being there at the right time the right program exactly exactly M music music fest in the summer have been successful too there's a lot of talented musicians in the area and they have had one or two uh small concerts on the park grounds and we could be more uh, helpful with something like this. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're really dreaming, it would be great to have something for the children all day long. If we could have uh, uh, preschool 
our Mother's Day Out is an extended program all day long because we know there is a, a need in many ways for uh, children to have uh, care uh, in which the parents can feel secure and know that there's love and, and a real concern for the child's welfare. But that, uh, that might be a long-term dream, and yet mm -hmm. as long as we're dreaming, that would be a, a real contribution, I think, to the, yeah. to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our, our fees are very low, and if we could offer low-cost, quality child care all day long, that would be marvelous. You would be very popular, I'm well, sure. I know that's a need in so many parts of town. It is. Now, the center, I assume, is already in partnership with a number of, of different congregations. Um, what are the kinds of things that congregations are already providing for the center? Perhaps some folks listening today would be encouraged to participate. Well, uh, the one way in which so many congregations in the community are contributing is to our sales room or clothing room. We've, we've moved it to a sales room because uh, we, we're receiving uh, from furniture on, on the way to uh, shoes and anything in between. So uh, in many instances, this is a very, very general uh, avenue through which churches uh, contribute. And uh, then uh, many churches contribute financially, and that has has been something which uh, always through the years has been a, a challenge to get adequate funds because for that type of institution to happen with so many people involved, there has to be constant maintenance. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maintenance does have a way of uh, draining finances sometimes, so we're very grateful to the widespread uh, contributions that are made by persons, not only Methodist, but uh, others throughout the community who see it as a very viable way to invest in uh, the welfare of the Montopolis community. Oh, and the United Methodist Women, of course, were the Women's Society of Christian Service when it was begun, but they've been a backbone of our supporters financially and in every way. It sounds as if you could use almost any kind of volunteer also, persons with, say, office skills or teaching skills or construction skills. True. And uh, even um, people with certain talents, mu music or storytelling, they could always be an asset at the preschool to give an added enrichment to the program there. So. Now, with changes happening in Austin, uh, the city growing and moving into high-tech arenas and everything that's happening in our city, what kinds of changes have you seen or, or could you guess you would see in the Montopolis area over the next few years that might, say, affect the work of the center? Well, many changes have taken place through the years, as we've already mentioned some, in terms of, of uh, parental uh, support in that it's necessary for uh, uh, both mother and father to work. Uh, and there was a time when uh, there was not bus service out there. There was mm -hmm. a time when there was not, uh, when the streets were, were not paved. The uh, community itself has done so much to um, in enrich the life of Montopolis and to improve the area there that they certainly uh, should be commended for right. the the growth and the strength that they're uh, showing as a community in uh, situations which are which are not always always easy, but um, uh, in terms of the future, I'm sure it will be a growing section of town, uh, as is all of Austin. But with the airport uh, right. in that direction, there may be many changes, many of which um, uh, we're of which we're not aware and maybe uh, no one is aware of at the time, but I'm sure that uh, in many instances um, many of the challenges that are experienced now will just increase so that we may be doing the same same thing. The I don't know that, that if you have a purpose of caring and sharing and wanting to enrich the lives of women and children in Montopolis, um, I don't know that we ever need to change that purpose, <laughs> but rather just find new avenues for I agree. fulfilling it. <laughs> and what a difference it must have made in your lives, too, to have been involved with the center. 
Well, I agree with that. You, you just find that you just leave a part of yourself there once you've invested some time and and you want to make sure that things go well and you continue your friendship with the people in the community and the children are so precious you want uh, especially good things for them so it's it's just a very satisfied satisfying feeling to have been there and working with them mm -hmm. the whole project and to see now your second generation and perhaps on beyond that of children you've worked with, right? Right. Grandchildren are, are coming to our preschool. Um, that's exciting to have known that their grandparents were there. I think once you retire from a schedule which is very demanding, then you're aware that, that life does go on and you want to continue being involved in worthwhile projects so that... Uh, for me, it, it has meant a real opportunity to um, choose how I wanted to use my time and to choose something that was fun. And this gives, uh, as Virginia said, uh, very real satisfaction, personal satisfaction, in that anything that you do is, is appreciated and uh, well received and you're in a setting in which you're aware of growth among others, but also you're growing yourself True. because every day brings new opportunities, new people with whom to work. Mm -hmm. New adventures, new mm -hmm. challenges, the whole bit. You know, we look back uh, probably in the middle 80s and we had a baby, uh, a little baby girl that had a really bad dental problem and the women were able, with the help of a, a wonderful dentist in town, f to uh, pay for surgery for her condition and this was a satisfying thing that we couldn't do all the time but we were able to raise money and guarantee that her teeth her baby teeth would be in good condition for the permanent teeth coming later that's just one instance that we've been real helpful making a difference in someone's life there's lots more stories i'm sure that we could tell about friendship community center and for those of you watching be sure to call the number on your screen and look for ways that you can be involved too in the lives of so many people in the montopolis area well Francis and Virginia, thank you. And thank you, too, for being with us today to hear about the ways that perhaps you could be involved in a special part of this wonderful community we live in, the Montopolis area. Thank you for being with us today for Austin Faith Dialogue. We certainly look forward to seeing you again next week. For more information, call Austin Metropolitan Ministries at 472 472-